Welcome. This is going to be episode six of Master Richards TV. Uh, this one will be a short one. It's a uh, Sunday night, so getting ready for work tomorrow. Uh, my government city that I work for is still actually working, uh, even though uh, the state of North Carolina has just announced a uh, 30-day mandatory shelter-in-place work from home in North Carolina. And so our organization's world headquarters is um, working from home for the next 30 days with, with uh, limited things that they can do, certain things they can't mail out, uh, so on and so forth. Um, for those of you that are my guys, uh, watch the email and the Facebook page. I'll give you some more information about what's going on in regards to our organization. I'm not going to put that on the video because we have a little broader audience on the video. So here we go, episode six, Master Richards TV is going to be real simple. We're going to cover some etiquette and protocol of the dobak. So dobak is a training robe. So bak is literally robes, and do would be a path or a way. So it's what you wear to learn the path or the way. Uh, so I'm wearing a dobak that uh, I would consider suitable for class. Um, for my school, uh, Black pants are worn by second degree black belt and above certified instructors. Uh, that's been my tradition for many, many years. Uh, years back, our organization <coughs> uh, had a black belt camp at FFA facility. Uh, we made, I think, a wise decision to go with black pants for that. Uh, so anybody who's been, uh, when we were doing that, that was part of what was included in the fee. So, of course, I, you know, I'm going to let those guys wear those pants uh, to regular classes, but not our uh, close tournaments. So, uh, the black pants normally is instructors, but in our school you might see some black belt candidates and even first degrees. So, with them, just to let you know that they've been to at least one black belt camp. All right, so enough about that. So, I'm going to start with how I tie a belt. I've seen a couple other people do some different things that I do like. This is the way that I teach it. Uh, years back, I drafted up a student manual just for our school, and I had a, and showing my age, this is back in, remember those books I talked about with pictures? So I had about, I guess, two pages of uh, four pictures on each page. I think it was a total of ten pictures. Uh, anyway, of how to tie the belt, and then some more pages on how to fold the uniform. So I figured uh, with modern technology, we'll go ahead and we'll put that on video. Uh, we can save that to our Facebook page and we'll have it forever. That is a common question that uh, parents ask me. So right off the bat, let me start with the uniform top. If any of you guys have been to my Little Dragons class, you've probably heard me say this before. I'll say, who put your uniform on you tonight? Which usually means I know that the Little Dragon didn't. And they'll say, Mommy, and I'll say, well, yeah, because you have your top tied feminine style. So a man's dress shirt will have the buttons on this lapel and the left side on top, and he'll button up. A woman's blouse would be the other way around. So whenever I see one of my little dragons with this panel on top, I know their mom put their uniform on for them. Uniform, unisex, everybody's the same, we're all the same. So, Monsuki, which again, I apologize, that's Japanese, I don't know the Korean. Um, your family crest goes over the heart, in theory, even though we now know our heart's more in the center of our chest. This is what everybody says is the heart. So, uh, your family crest goes over your left breast. Um, this one's been covered up because it's been trimmed, but if this was a white belt uniform, right down here on this corner uh, would be the manufacturer's logo on the outside. So that's the other way you know that that's the top of the top. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, take this belt and top off, and I'm going to show you how I would expect you to put both things on well, for our class. Again, it's not right, it's not wrong. It is different. It's just how we do. So, remember my rule. However your instructor told you to do it, 
that's right for your school. So, take this belt, be respectful of it, it represents what I've earned. I'm going to set it off camera here. And I'm going to take this top. And I'm just going to set it on the floor just for a minute because I'm fixing to put it right back on. So we're just going to set it off camera right in front of me. So, if you've been watching Master Richard's TV, you know I got pet peeves, so pet peeves. Step one, tuck your t-shirt in all the way around. Uh, gentlemen, at a minimum, uh, you might want to wear an A-shirt or a t-shirt under your dough box during class. Now, traditionally, uh, the real old school masters will wear no shoes, no martial arts shoes, no no-slip socks, uh, just underpants, and nothing else to be closest to nature. So they're barefoot, and there's no t-shirt. So that, that's old school. Um, I'm going to tell you why I don't do that. Uh, and I'm going to tell you why most of the rec centers I've been in, I don't recommend my students to do that. So technically, this, with your top and belt folded properly, which is I'll show you at the end of the video, is technically how you should enter class. Karate pants on, it's okay and your t-shirt or whatever. You look mostly like a civilian going to some kind of workout. The pants obviously look comfortable, uh, but unless they got the, you know, Asian writing down the side like these do, they just look like black workout pants and, you know, you're not drawing attention to yourself. So that's how we would enter class. So step one, t-shirts tucked in all the way around because, um, for me, just a pet peeve when I got pieces of t-shirt hanging out in between the poles of the dobok and uh, ropes hanging out all over the place. Uh, I guess I was in the Corps of Cadets long enough for that bothered me. So, I'm going to take the top, put it on like my Sunday go to meet and uh, dinner jacket. And what's in my right hand is going to go all the way across. And I'm going to tie these inside ties first. This is how I tie. If you make the bunny ears or whatever, you're going to make a slip knot that you can pull apart when you're done training. Remember I said the side with the patch will be on top, so that goes second. And it comes across. make your bunny ears or however you tie it. I tell my little dragons, if you can tie shoes, you can tie this. You tie this just like you tie your shoes. And now I've got my top presentation. I don't have any t-shirt hanging out in this gap or the flap. And I know at least on this side, I don't even have the strings of the tie hanging out. They're all covered up. So my presentation is clean and crisp. So here we go. How to tie a belt at World Karate Academy and anybody else that does it the same way I do. Pet peeve number two. It's important to get the ends even and everybody normally takes the middle of the belt and puts it on the middle of their tummy. And you will get the ends even that way. Unless you've got a couple systems in place, uh, you'll get one of my other pet peeves is you'll get a, a cross in the back. Let me show you how I do it, and that kind of explains why I do it the way I do it. Now let's talk about this belt for a minute. If you're a white belt or a solid color belt, color belt this is going to be easy because there's no senior side or top or bottom to your belt. If you're a senior whatever, in most of the schools in our system uh, where we use the half and half belts, available from various suppliers I won't name there's two of them that I can think of right off the top of my head uh, and my local supplier has all the combinations that make sense for a taekwondo because that's the, uh, the bulk of, of their business is the taekwondo schools here in the Atlanta metro area 
But nevertheless, a lot of people are using that, you know, the lower side of the belt for us would be orange, and the top half of the belt would be green. It applies, there are senior orange belt, so they're orange belt that's aspiring to become a green belt, so it's half orange, half green, and so on and so forth. You can, all the color combinations that go between your full color belts and whatever your system is. If you have that belt, the lower rank has to go on the bottom, and the higher color has to go on top. Or I have jokes in my school, if you guys haven't figured this out, you'll come into class and I'll look at you and I'll say, hmm, you're aspiring to become white belt, because they'll have their orange on the bottom and their white on the top, which would imply that they're an orange belt working and going backwards to white belt. So, you know, they got to flip it over. So if you got a half and half belt, be aware of what's the top and what's the bottom. The higher rank in your system is the top and the lower rank in your system is the bottom. Monogram belts. Uh, after you complete your probationary period, the first degree black belt in our system and in our school, um, you're awarded your monogram belt. Uh, it'll have your name and potentially your Don number on one end. Mine is written in Hanja on this particular belt. And typically it'll have the name of the art or your organization on the other end of this particular belt. This is uh, my original belt testing the fourth degree black belt for the first time. Uh, so it just says Tong Sudo uh, in Hanja. So this is Hanja, which is the same thing as Kanji. And this is Hangul, which is traditional. So, this belt, you know, kind of says some things about my philosophy. It says this would be more formal, so that's the name of the art. It's the senior end of the belt. And this just says, Richard does. It's as close as you can translate my name. Uh, Korean would kind of say it, uh, unless they've been in the U.S. for a really long time. So, that's my name in Hangul. That's the junior side of the belt. Uh, and that's what I do, Tang Sudo, uh, in Hanja, which is more formal writing for Koreans uh, on the senior side of the belt. So here we go. Now that I've established the senior end of the belt, so all you black belts, pay attention. The senior end of the belt goes on my left knee. The half point that you guys were looking for is going to end up in my left hand in the middle of my back anyway. If I'm holding the belt like this, got the left, the senior end on my left knee, it's going to end up on the right when we're done tying. And the half point in the middle of my back with my left hand, now I'm going to take my left hand and move around my body. Sorry, that was the quarter point that was in the middle of my back. And now the half point that a lot of you guys were trying to put on the middle of your tummy is now there anyway. So you should look like this, a quarter of the belt, the halfway point, so half of the belt is laying on the floor. So I'm going to hold this juncture with my left hand now, take my right hand, and start to wrap the belt around. Now you can see with my thumb and finger, I'm kind of making a groove, and I'm guiding the top belt placement to be exactly right on top. Gonna switch hands of the existing wrap that's there. Again, you know me, I have pet peeves, so now I have no crisscross in the back on this belt. I just have one belt. Now that's that's pet peeve for me. If you got crisscross, I'll say so. Now, these instructions are very important here because if you don't do this part right, you're gonna have what I call a smile. We'll get to that in a minute. So I'm going to take what's on top of everything and go under everything. So it'll go under both wraps. This is where I check to see if my ends are going to be somewhat even. And I'm going to take what's on the bottom, which is my left hand, and go from left to right, staying on the bottom, over, and then through the circle that that just made. Now, remembering how we moved our hands crisply, I'll grab both ends of the belt like Chumbi and pull the belt tight. Check, my ends are about even. 
place the knot about on the middle of my abdomen. There's no crossover. So, had I not gone under everything and I made that same knot, everything would be correct, but the, the knot would be hanging down below this wrap. So I call that a smile belt, you know, because you got this going on. The kind of belt kind of looks like a happy face. I look at them and say, hey, you got a smile belt. Go fix that. So this is, this is how we tie a belt. Now you'll notice this uh, V-shaped knot, the V is facing to my right. It represents my cup. It's open to receive knowledge. And if you know how we line up in class, my senior is always over there to my right. So I'm going to receive knowledge from my right into my open cup, and I'm ready to train. So again, going into some research and stuff that I've read before, uh, they talked about why is this important, uniform presentation, belt being tied correctly and all that. And uh, one, I, I, I can't accredit it to any one match because I've seen it in a couple places. Uh, but the quote basically goes like this. As the sensei is looking at the uh, Padawan, and he can see the level of attention to detail and quality that was taken in something as simple as tying the belt. It will give her an indication of what kind of quality um, and dedication that student has to the art. Um, and, you know, some old school masters will make some decisions about what they're going to share with you uh, based on what they perceive about your level of commitment uh, and your, your seriousness and how, you know, take time to do things correctly once you've been shown, uh, even if it seems like a small thing, they're looking for that attention to detail. Because again, as we, as we get higher up, we start peeling back layers of this onion, things are going to be very similar, but it could be a very minute change to make something a different application. And so if you, you don't have that eye for detail, you don't have that focus, uh, that subtlety would be lost on you, and you know, most senior instructors would just not share that with you, is how, kind of how that's going to work out. Um, you're not ready, in their opinion. They're going to give you the basics. They're going to just keep making your house strong. Uh, but some of those little extra nuggets, if you haven't shown that you're ready for them yet, they won't show them to you. That's, that's just kind of how it is, uh, and that's kind of how life goes. So now I'm hoping that I've got enough of the floor in here. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit pause and uh, flip this thing to landscape because uh, we're going to be on the floor. I'm going to show you um, how I fold up a uniform. It's, again, it's not right, it's not wrong, it's just different. But I'm going to show you how, how I do it or we might do it in our school and that will end the video for today. Alright, so we're back recording. I'm in landscape. Hopefully we've got enough view of the floor here. The lighting looks horrible, but we'll see what it looks like when we upload. So here's the box laid out on the floor. We finished training. Uh, we're getting ready to go home. Uh, it's a crumpled up mess. Like most of my little dragons would leave it. So now, hopefully you can see. I'm going to kind of straighten it out. And if any of you wear men's dress clothes to work like I do, You'll know that the most important thing is just kind of keep the same creases. You don't want to iron new creases into a shirt. You want to iron it where the creases exist. So the whole point of folding this dough box up correctly is just that. We're going to fold it up pretty much with the same seams it already has. So now I've got it laid out in a T. I've got everything cleaned up, pretty efficient, and I'm going to take this bottom corner and the sleeve and fold it over. Then I'm going to bring the sleeve back to this edge right here. Okay, and then this sleeve is going to get folded up into what I'm about to do. And then I'm going to hold on to this other corner, which is barely in camera. 
grab this other sleeve from out of camera. When I fold it over, I want to kind of be right in the middle, just like so. Then I'm going to bring this sleeve back inside this line here. And the top will look something like this. Got ahead of myself. Rewind. So we're going to open this thing back up. I'm wearing the pants, so that's what threw me off. Before I do all that, let's assume I've put my shorts or my jeans on, went in the gender appropriate restroom or changing room. A lot of modern martial arts schools have single stall closet size changing rooms. You go in, lock the door, and you change, and then you come out, and they're non-gender. So I'll fold these things in half. Fold them in half lengthwise. And I'm going to put the waistband and foot edge down at the bottom of the toe box, right up in here. Now I'm going to do what I said already. When I make this fold, the edge of this pants is going to be as far as I fold this. Sleeve, what we talked about. This sleeve inside this edge. Grab the other sleeve. This corner. Fold. Just like so, like we've had it before. Sleeve. Inside both edges. So that's how we get there. Then I'm going to fold this whole sandwich in half left to right and in half vertically. Now I've got a belt laid out here that's folded in half. Put that uniform right in the middle of that. Tie this doubled up belt into a knot, just like so. Come around on the other side. Take the loose ends through this open end of the belt, just like so. And I would throw this over my shoulder to leave clasp. And I've now made a carry satchel out of my dough box. I've got it folded up nice and clean where it won't wrinkle itself. If I've got one of those big bags and I put my sparring gear in, I could just put this right in the bag. It would take up less space. Head gear, foot gear, and hand gear would fit around it in my bag nicely. Have plenty of room. Okay. Uh, other option, you got this knot tied. You can stick your hand through here like a waiter's towel. And uh, walk into class like so. Keep your uh, dough box nice and clean and preserved. All right, so that's how to tie a belt, how to fold a dough box, Master Richard style. It's not right, wrong, the same or different from what your instructor does. Remember my golden rule uh, when you're in your dojang at home, however your instructor says to do it, that's the right way. Uh, thank you. Continue to train hard, and thank you for watching uh, episode 6 of Master Richards TV.